Okay, let's do this. Welcome everyone. This will be a class for everyone, just like every Sunday. The idea today is that we will work with our core and we will build towards headstands. Headstand is supposed to be the king of all poses in yoga. So I'll be giving different variations. You don't need to come all the way upside down today, but I will be giving you some stepping steps, stepping stones, some steps so that you get to it one day at a time. So we'll come to lying down. Bend your knees and place your hands to your belly. Relax your eyebrows, relax your jaw. And notice how your belly rises with every inhale. How it drops with every exhale. Relax the muscles of your face, relax your jaw. And relax any attachment to the past, to anything that happened yesterday or before that, to anything that happened five minutes ago or before that. Also relax any connection with the future, any expectations of what's going to happen five minutes from now and after that. Even goals and ambitions, detach from them for a few moments. and promise yourself that you'll be here with your breath for the rest of this class. Good, now place your hands to your floating ribs, the lower rib cage. Notice how every inhale has the rib cage flaring out and every exhale has it coming back in. Notice how the inhale has the belly button rising up and the rib cage widening out. Notice how every exhale has the belly button dropping back down and the rib cage coming in. Now your intention is that for the next inhales, the belly and the rib cage will stay where they are at the exhale. So notice how the belly is back in with the exhale, the rib cage is in. And try to hold everything in as you keep inhaling deeply. Exhale, see how low the belly button is how low the ribcage is, and inhale. The belly button might come towards your chin and so might your ribcage, but keep them at the same height, keep them low. Exhale, belly button might drop a bit more, might cool towards the pubis and so might the ribcage. And inhale, hold everything in as you lift everything towards your chin. Keep your eyebrows and your jaw relaxed. Release your arms by your sides and try to keep breathing in that way so that the breath is full but the inhale does not have the rib cage flaring out and it does not have the belly button rising up. Keep pressing the lower back down to the ground 
and every time you inhale, keep the belly button in, sucking it towards the uh, towards the spine. Keep the rib cage in, lifting the back bottom ribs towards the chest. The intention is to stay with this breath throughout the moving practice. Keeping the lower belly in and keeping the ribcage closed and lifting up has you lengthening the lower back and strengthening the deep core muscles. That means that your lower back will get stronger, will not get compromised during your practice and that means that your deep core will be active and it will help you to have a strong and safe practice which means that you'll be going deeper into poses without compromising your health and your body so keeping those engagements press down into the feet make sure that the feet are shoulder width apart the feet are flat on the ground and the fingertips are caressing the back of the heels when you extend the arms. Press feet down and inhale, lift the pelvis up, keeping the lower belly in, bring the chest towards the chin and exhale, start coming down with the upper back, middle back and lower back and sacrum coming down one at a time. Again, inhale, Posterior pelvic tilt, pubis towards your chin as you lift the pelvis up, the rib cage, the chest, chest to the chin, and then exhale, come back, starting with the upper back, the middle back, the lower back, the sacrum. Three more times. Inhale, really articulate the movement. Turn the pubic bone towards your chin. Lift up slowly, and exhale, Come down slowly, one vertebra at a time. Okay, let's make this the last one. Keep pressing the feet down, keep the glutes active, keep the knees moving away from the chin and the chest moving to the chin. And then exhale, keep the knees away as you start unwinding down, unrolling the spine slowly one vertebra at a time bring your knees to your chest hug your knees you want to press the knees down onto the chest and move the sits bones away flex the feet keep the heels close to the glutes inhale here press down using the hands and exhale start rocking from side to side massage your upper back massage your middle back Massage your lower back. Keep inhaling, keeping the lower belly in. And then exhale, bring your head towards the knees. Keep rocking from side to side. Pull the shoulder blades down. Use your core to find the forehead on the knees. And exhale, slowly come down. And then rock back and forth. Back and forth. Back and forth. Every time coming a bit higher and eventually you might be able to come to a seated position or you can come to the side and use your hands to find yourself in a seated position. We'll find our even breath just like last week. Remember we're breathing continuously throughout the practice with a steady long deep breath. Chest is proud back of the crown is lifting up, roll the shoulders back and down, keep the lower belly sucked in, the ribcage in, if you want to you can keep the hands there to help you remember what's happening, so inhale, lift the back bottom ribs up and exhale, keep the lower belly in, keep your seat strong, inhale for three, two, one, exhale, four, three, two, one, in, four, three, two, one, out, four, three, exhale, exhale, inhale, 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 exhale, 
x x x x inhale four three two one x four three even it out smoothen it out inhale stop inhale and exhale stop exhale and inhale Inhale, release your arms by the side. Exhale, relax your eyebrows, relax your jaw. Inhale the arms up, follow the breath with the movement, and exhale the arms down. And one. Inhale, arms up, and exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to the left. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, lateral stretch to the right. Right hand down. Pull through the left hand. Inhale, come back up. Reach up. And exhale to the left. One more time. Inhale, up. Exhale, twist, maybe go deeper than before. Inhale, back to center. And exhale to the left. Don't forget the belly, keep sucking lower belly in. Inhale, arms up, keep the ribcage in and up. Exhale, lateral stretch to the right. Go deeper than before. Inhale, come up, reach up, elongate. And exhale to the left. Inhale, come forward. And exhale, fold forward. Stay here. Uncurl the tailbone back. Sack lower belly in and forward. Roll the shoulder blades back. Maybe you're higher. Maybe you can bring the chest closer to the ground. Keep uncurling the tailbone back and up anterior pelvic tilt, suck the lower belly in and forward, the ribcage in and forward, and relax the forehead on the ground. Inhale deeply in a strong, straight line. And exhale completely, breathing in and out through the nose, keeping the lower belly in. Press the hands down and inhale, come to all fours. Maybe you can slide forward, maybe you move to the side to find this position. Exhale, round the back, press into the hands. Inhale and curl the tailbone, keep the lower belly in, arch the chest, the chin. And exhale, roll back down, round the back. Inhale, start with the pelvis, articulate every vertebra as you arch the back. And exhale, press into the hands, round the lower belly, chest, chin. Stay here, press the tops of the hands down, of uh, the feet down, press the tops of the feet down, press into the hands and push so that you lift the knees off the ground for five. So this is a lot of core strength. Four, four, keep pressing hands down, feet down, round the back. Four, three. Two. And exhale, roll over the feet. Find downward facing dog. Take this as an opportunity to stretch the legs, stretch the toes, pedal the knees, stretch your ankles. But keep breathing smoothly, keep breathing evenly, relax your head, and then with your next inhale, inhale to plank, exhale knees, and keep the elbows in as you lower, inhale come forward, and exhale push back, downward facing down. So building on this, inhale plank pose. Exhale, knees, elbows in, low push-up. Inhale, forward, cobra upward facing dog, pressing tops of the feet down. 
and exhale, downward facing dog. One more time. Inhale, plank pose. If you have the core strength, keep the knees off the ground. Elbows in, exhale, low push up. Inhale, forward, upward facing dog. And exhale, push into the hands. Last time, so remember you can bring the knees down. Inhale, plank pose. Exhale, low push up. Inhale, slide forward, forward, and up. Cobra up, duck. And exhale, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, gaze forward, and inhale, walk or hop forward. Half leg. And exhale, fold over the legs. Press the feet down and inhale, rise up, reach up, gaze. Exhale, arms by the sides. Press down into the feet, reach up through the back of the skull. We're going to do Surya Namaskara A and B today. So throughout the moving meditation, that is the sun salutation, you want to Keep reminding yourself to keep the legs active, keep the pelvic floor active, suck the lower belly in and up, ribs in and up, open up the chest and relax the muscles of the face. Let's try it. So press down into the feet and inhale the arms up, reach up in a straight line, exhale, fold over the legs, keep the weight coming forward, press the balls of the feet down. Inhale, half lift, you can keep the knees bent if you need to. And exhale, walk or hop back into your low push-up. Remember, the knees can be on the ground. Inhale, forward, upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale, back, downward facing dog for five breaths. If it takes you more than an inhale, more than an exhale to do a movement, then you will build towards doing every movement in that capacity of breath but until you get there just make sure that you're breathing throughout the practice and make sure that you're doing your best that's all that you need to do and one day at a time you'll get closer to doing the sun salutation with the classical one inhale one exhale movements Good, so it's five deep breaths in your downward facing dog. Keep pressing down into your hands, straightening the arms, keep reaching back through the heels. And remember, you can always bend the knees to have some more access to the pelvis. You want to send the sit bones up to the sky. And then bend the knees, inhale, gaze forward and walk or hop forward, half lift. Exhale, fall over the legs, pressing the palms on the ground, bend the knees if needed. Inhale, reach up. Press the feet down, straighten the legs, straighten the arms up. And exhale, arms by your sides. We'll try one more time. So inhale, the arms forward and up. Reach up, reach, reach, reach up. And exhale, arms forward and down. Keep pressing both of the feet down if you need to bend the knees. Inhale, walk, uh, lift the chest, roll the shoulder blades back. And exhale, walk or hop back. If you're walking, don't always walk with the same foot. Switch it up. Inhale forward, press the toes of the feet down, arch the back, and exhale, press into the hands, downward facing dog. Try to make sure that the inner feet and the outer feet are reaching towards the back. Don't lift too much through the inner feet or through the outer feet. Keep reaching the heels back, and if possible, straighten the legs and reach the heels back. If straightening the legs limits the pelvis too much, then feel free to bend the knees to have that access to your pelvis so that you can set your sit bones, the bottom of the pelvis, towards the back and towards the ceiling. From there, keep pressing the hands down to straighten the whole torso and keep widening the shoulder blades, moving the shoulder blades away from one another. Remember to keep breathing, that's the rule number one. Inhaling with the lower belly in and exhaling, keeping that integrity, that length of the whole body. Bend the knees, inhale, walk or hop forward and exhale, fold over the legs. Press both of the feet down, inhale, push to rise up, reach up and exhale, arms by your sides. Sun salutation B. 
Inhale, arms up and bend the knees slightly. Chair pose. Exhale, fall forward. Same idea as like before, we just bend the knees a bit. Inhale, pick up the chest, the chin. Now the legs are straight or you can keep them bent. And exhale again, walk or hop back. Keep the lower belly in. A lot of core action. Inhale, slide forward and up. Keep pressing the hands down. And exhale, press into the hands. Push the hips up and away. Inhale, the right foot forward, warrior one position. Left heel is down and you reach up through the arms. And exhale, you come down right away. Again, if you need more breaths, go with your own pace. Inhale, forward and up. Press, feet down, hands down. And exhale, push away through the arms. Send the sit bones up. Inhale, the left foot forward, warrior one on this side. And exhale. Lower down. Again, take your time if you're feeling this is too hard. Inhale forward and exhale back. Five breaths in downward facing dog. So in any case, I'm trying to show the traditional variations, but take more breaths in every step if you need to. Until you're able to do the Inhale forward and up into a lunge in one inhale and if to lower the arms and to bring the foot back and to come to a low push-up in one exhale. Until then feel free to take an extra breath. But remember what you're working towards. So it's a faster movement so that the breath can keep being even. It's, a, it's the same inhale to pull, pull yourself forward into an up dog as it is to bring the right foot forward and rise up and lift the arms and bend the knee and bring the back foot down for, for a lunge, for a warrior. And it's the same exhale to push back into a down dog as it is to bring the arms down from warrior and bring the foot back and push into the arms and then bend the elbows and lower down into a chaturanga and that's in a low push-up position. Very well. Bend the knees, inhale, walk or hop forward. Keep rising up through the chest and then exhale, fall over the legs and again lengthen the movement so that you're following your exhale. Press the feet down, inhale Utkatasana, bend the knees, weight on the heels and exhale, rise up, arms down. One more time, so inhale, bend the knees, pull the belly in, reach the arms up, Utkatasana, chair pose and exhale, fall over the legs, bring the weight forward to the balls of the feet, straighten the legs if possible. Inhale, keep the weight forward, feeling that the front of the legs contracts, lengthen the back of the legs. And exhale, walk or hop back, pressing into the arms, bringing the elbows in, bring knees down if you need to. Inhale, forward and up, press into the hands, chest and chin up. And exhale, push to reach back and up through the pelvis. Inhale, the right foot forward, left heel in and rise up. And exhale, bring the arms down, pull the belly in, find a plank and a downward <coughs> and chaturanga. Inhale, come forward and up. And exhale, press and follow your breath, no rush. <coughs> Inhale, the left foot forward, right heel down, pull the belly in and rise up. And exhale, fall forward, press the hands down, pull the belly in and lower down. Inhale, press into all knuckles. Press into tops of the feet, pick up the chest, the chin, and exhale, push into the hands, and come back to a down dog position. Hopefully this sun salutation was easier than the other before. Keep the lower belly in, keep pressing into the hands wide and the shoulder blades. You want to find stillness in these positions that we're holding, and you want to use your breath to cleanse through the straight lines that you're creating. So inhale deeply, and exhale completely, completely. <laughs> Inhale here. And exhale, pushing into the hands, reaching back through the heels, staying active through the whole body. Inhale deeply. And exhale, last exhale, complete your exhale first. Then inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward, walk or hop forward, all in one inhale. And exhale, fold over the legs, reaching the weight forward. 
Inhale, rise up, Utkatasana, bend the knees, reach up through the chest, the arms, and exhale, arms by your sides. Good job. Great job, actually. Okay, open up the feet, keep distance apart. Keep the second toes facing forward, but this time the feet are apart. Maybe your feet were apart before too, that's fine. Feet together just makes it so much harder for people that are not 16 year old Indian boys. So press down into the feet, suck the lower belly and pick up the chest. This variation, this pose has to be done from the feet apart. Pick up the chest and inhale, grab the feet, keep facing forward. Exhale, fall down, pulling on the big toes. Again, if it's too much to hold the toes, then bend the knees and curl the tailbone up. Inhale here. And exhale, keep sending the sit bones up, suck the lower belly in and reach your rib cage towards the ground. Try it again. Inhale, bring all the weight forward to the balls of the feet, keep pulling through the hands. And exhale, suck the lower belly in even more. Reach the rib cage towards the feet. Last one. Inhale deeply. And exhale, pull with the hands. Reach shoulder blades up, reach crown of the head down. Pull the belly in, inhale halfway up. Exhale, stay here. And then inhale, bring your hands under the feet, stepping on the palms and bringing the weight forward again. And exhale, bend the elbows if it's available. You can always bend the knees. Five deep breaths here, bringing all the weight forward. Reaching the weight forward, pressing down into the balls of the feet, into the tops of the hands. Take three more deep breaths. Stay here and breathe. Four, three. Two. And one. Good job. With your next inhale, release the arms, bring them to the top of the mat and take a small step back with the feet and then exhale, bring all the weight forward into the hands press into the arms and widen the shoulder blades this is handstand preparation and it builds all the strength of the core so press down into the hands and move the weight forward come to your tippy toes if possible five breaths here, pressing into strong arms strong straight arms, strong straight shoulders four, four Keep the lower belly in and the rib cage towards the ground. Four, three. Keep sending six bones up. Press hands down. Four, two. Keep pushing into the arms and keep the belly in. Four, one. Walk or hop to Chaturanga. Low push up. Bring the knees down in a minute. Inhale forward. Press the hands and roll forward. And exhale back. Press into the hands and push up. Push back. Good. Bring your right foot in front of the left foot and then cross the left foot behind and then keep walking with the legs crossed bend the knees, bend the hips so eventually you want to come to this position where your hands are on the ground your hips are quite low press into the hands, pull the belly in and keep walking to walk through you need a lot of core action and hip flexor action so you're folding the front of the body so that you're able to have the hands on the ground palms on the ground, knuckles on the ground, and hop and walk through. This works towards hopping through, which is something we'll do in classes that are not beginner's classes. So send your sit bones back, grab your big toes again, flex your feet. Remember what we did before, five breaths here, but keep sucking the lower belly in, ribs in, and lift up, and keep on curling the tailbone back, four, four stay here i'll just show something so this is posterior pelvic tilt and this is anterior pelvic tilt you want an anterior pelvic tilt so that you can fold forward keep breathing there where you are and keep thinking of anterior pelvic tilt so you're here now with an anterior pelvic tilt not posterior because then you're compromising your whole body it can be a strong position to have a round back position, but that's not what we're going for right now. So I'm curl the tailbone back and keep the chest proud. One last breath. And exhale, fold forward. 
Yeah, maybe you're higher up. Maybe you need to bend the knees. Keep thinking of and curling the tailbone up and chest up. Four, four. If you're comfortable, you can start straightening the legs and bring the chest towards the feet. Four, three. Flex the feet, send your heels away, send your sit bones back. Four, two. And you can bend the elbows to pull the head towards the feet. Four, one. Inhale, pick up the chest, the chin. Exhale, stay here, but keep pressing the heels down. Activate your quads, the front of the legs. Inhale, bring the feet, bring the hands under the feet again. So just like we were doing before in the standing forward fold. And then exhale from here, push forward with the feet, bend the elbows and move forward. Four, five. So there's two things you're working here, your hamstrings and your lower back. You're straight, stretching the whole back of the body by contracting the front of the body. Because today we're working with core, it's more important to lengthen the lower back. We don't care so much about the hamstrings. So that's why I'm saying, if you need to bend the knees and press forward with the feet to find more length in the lower back, suck the lower belly in and use your core to bring the chest closer to the feet. And eventually you'll straighten the legs and you'll come down by even bending the elbows and pulling yourself forward. One last breath here, keep the feet flexed, Keep the quadriceps active, keep the core active. And then inhale, pick up the chest, the chin. Exhale, stay here, stay active. And then inhale, release, slowly come up. Exhale. Okay, bring your weight back, pick up the chest and pick up the legs. Different options, straight legs is a good option. If you need to bend the knees, it becomes more accessible and keep remembering to open up the chest. So if you want it harder, straighten the legs, and if you want it harder, bring the arms up. If you want it even harder, bring the arms all the way up and breathe, four, five. So I'm just giving options here. Keep the belly in, chest up, four, four. Keep the legs active, four, three. Focus on the lower belly being pulled in, the chest up, four, two. And one, slowly bring everything down with control. Flex the feet and make sure that you're sitting in front of the six bones. So and curl the tailbone back onto your pelvic tilt. We'll point the feet, activate the legs, and then we'll round the back this time. So suck lower belly in, ribs in, pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down, bring the chin in and round your spine. Bring your hands next to the thighs. So not next to the knees, not next to the hips, in between. Pull the shoulder blades back and down and roll forward. Take three breaths here. Keep pointing the feet. Whole leg is active. Hamstrings are active, glutes are active, thighs are active. Two more breaths. Keep sucking lower belly in and up. Keep the chest active, contracting, pull the shoulder blades down the back, one more breath, keep pointing the feet, legs active, core active, flexing the spine, flexing the front of the body, keep everything flexed and inhale, slowly rise up with all the engagements happening. We can repeat what we did, especially if you really felt it, if you didn't feel it, then do more this time and contract uh, and contract. So front of the legs squeezing and front of the body squeezing. If you want to go deeper, I'll be giving options. So let's go for it. Roll the shoulders back, shoulder blades down, send your sit bones down and roll the chin in, round up. Press the hands down, elbows in, point the feet. And then from here you can stay, or you can press your hands down. Remember the palms are at the center between knees and hips. So push down with the hands, and maybe you lift the hips up. Keep everything flexed. If you want more, you pull the hips back. Keep everything flexed. And if you want more, press into the hands. Maybe you, you bring one leg up, take it down. Other leg up, take it down. Maybe both legs are up. Two more breaths. Keep the feet pointed, the legs active. And one. Very slowly, you come down, if anything, lift it up, and you inhale and you come up. Take a breath. 
We're working a lot with our core so that we work towards headstand. So any variation works. I just want you to feel something. And because some people might already be quite athletic and they might be able to just round down without any effort, I want them to really press and really use the core and use the hip flexors. Good. So inhale, rise up. And exhale, bring the legs in, feet in, knees in. So remember that round back position and that core action. That's what we want to go back. So press down into the hands, push, and see if you can lift the hips off the ground. You can press down with the feet. So lift the hips up. And then from there, maybe you lift the feet up too. And then you kick back. Or maybe you press into the hands and you start walking back. Plank position and then exhale, come forward and come down, lie on the ground. Good job. Just a bit more core activation before we go for our head stance. Legs in, point the feet, press down into the feet, pull the belly in, reach forward through the chin. Press the hands down, press the pelvis down, and inhale the chin forward, the chin up. Roll the shoulders back and down, and breathe four, five. Press the feet down, the hands, the pubis, four, four. Pick up the chest a bit more, but keep squeezing the pelvic floor, four, three. Suck the lower belly in and forward, lengthen the lower back, come higher, four, two. Use your chest, use your deltoid muscles, lift up. Four, one, slowly exhale, reaching forward and reaching down. Good job. Bring your hands down, press down into the hands, pull the belly in, tuck the toes under, keep the elbows in. So from here, the idea is that you push and you come to a chaturanga, a low push-up. You can keep your knees on the ground. So push and come up. Inhale, slide forward, upward facing dog. And exhale, push back, downward facing dog. Press down into the hands, widen the shoulder blades. Bring the left foot in so that the heel is on the ground. If it's not, it's not a problem. Inhale the right leg up and away. Keep the hips square. Today we're not opening up the hips. So press down into the hands, widen the shoulder blades. Bring the right knee to the right uh, forehead as you come to a plank. So inhale, plank with the right knee onto the right forehead and exhale, leg back and up. Two more. Inhale, the knee forward, keep the heel high, glued onto the butt, and exhale, come back, reach back, reach up. And last one, knee to forehead, keep the belly in, and exhale, push back, push up. Bring the foot back to the ground, and bring the left leg up. Pull the belly in, reach the heel higher up, keep the hips squared, so toes facing down. And then inhale the left knee to the left forehead, keep the heel close to the glutes. And exhale, kick up, kick back. Two more. Keep your deep core engaged, the front of the body flexing. Last one. Bring the foot down, bring the knees down, and rest in child's pose. You can completely rest in child's pose, or you can stay active, sending the sit bones back, sucking the lower belly in and forward, and reaching forward through the arms to lengthen. Four more breaths here. Remember, you can relax, so you can use your bandas, suck lower belly in and towards the crown. And they tell the core up, lift, lower ribs up. Okay, so we're starting with some more headstand drills. So we'll come to all fours. We'll place the elbows under the shoulders. So in order to find that positioning of the elbows, what you can do is have opposite biceps. 
and by hugging your biceps then you're making sure that the elbows are quite close and then when you open up the arms the elbows stay under the shoulders interlace the fingers so form a cup with the hands you can bring the pinky finger that's at the bottom you can bring it in and then press the wrists on the ground press the elbows on the ground we're bringing our head there in between the hands and we're nesting it quite well so that the crown of the head presses down onto the ground so push down into the head Press down onto the elbows and widen the shoulder blades. Take a couple of breaths to get used to this feeling of having weight on the head. And feel how pressing the head down forces the neck muscles to engage. The neck muscles should stay active. We don't want to just collapse all of our weight onto the neck. That could be lethal. <laughs> okay. What's happening with the elbows is that they're actually slightly, well, they are really pressing down and they're slightly pulling towards one another. So when you press the elbows down and pull them towards one another, you'll again feel the neck muscles engaging and you'll also feel the shoulder blades widening, shoulder blades separating. That's what you want in order to find that round back position. So remember what we were doing before, rounding the back, that allows you to use all the strength of your chest. So press down into the head, press the elbows down, pull the elbows in. From here you can come back to child's pose and rest. Take a moment and then come back in. So the next step is to keep pressing the head down, keep pressing the elbows down and pulling them towards one another. And then you tuck the toes under and you lift the hips up. Already this might be too much. So stay here and breathe. If you want to intensify it, you walk the feet forward and you breathe at your limit. Keep pressing the head down, the elbows down, pulling the elbows together. Focus on how the neck engages, how the shoulder blades widen. Three more breaths. Two, relax the muscles of the face. And one. Slowly you walk back and you come down to child's pose. Now it's mandatory. So again in the child's pose you can choose to relax or you can lengthen the arms forward, widen the shoulder blades, reach forward through the arms and back through the sits bones. Relax your face and take five deep breaths. Four, four. Three. and one, engage through the core, press the hands down and move forward. Okay, next step, elbows down, hands interlaced. Maybe you interlace the fingers the other way every once in a while, so that you're not always with the same pinky at the bottom and with the same thumb on top. Keep the elbows quite close to one another, press the elbows down, pull the elbows in, feel the back of the body engaging and then round the back, feel the front of the body flexing, feel the front of the body working, place the crown of the head to the ground, back of the head against your hands. And then from here, you can stay, maybe this is where you're staying today, that's fine, keep working, stay active. If you want more, straighten the legs, walk the feet in. And then if you want more, keeping the feet as close as possible to the head, the pelvis is actually very close to vertical when it comes to the head. Then you bring one knee in, the heel in, and you really push the knee to the chest, and then you bring the foot back down, close to the head, and you bring the left knee in, heel in, push leg to chest, and then you bring the foot back down, close to the chest, and then right foot again, right foot in, point the foot, knee in, press into the head, switch sides. Left knee in, heel in, pull the belly, press the hands down, the elbows down, the head down, hand, foot down, last one on each side. So right foot in, knee in, pull the belly in, lift the pelvis up, come to the tippy toes of the left foot, come down, left knee in, heel in, lift up, come to the tippy toes of the right foot, 
and come down. Walk back slowly, keeping the engagement, don't collapse now, and then come back to child's pose. So what we just did is a great exercise. For the next one, you're welcome to place yourself against the wall. So if you're going for the wall, you want to be one palm's distance away. That's where your hands were interlaced and you'll place the head in the hands and then you'll go for the drill that I will show now. So you know that there's a wall behind you. If there's a wall behind you, then you're not afraid that you're going to roll over, even though rolling over is not the end of the world. So if you want to try it in the center of the mat, just know that if you end up losing your balance and rolling over, you want to remind yourself, which will be instinctive, to pull the chin in and to roll forward so that you just end up rolling over in a strong, compact ball. And then nothing will happen as long as there's no obstacles and no people. So make sure that there's a wall behind you or, the, uh, or that there's space like in front of you. So either wall or space in front of you when you're in all fours. Then place your hands down into your legs, one, one palm's distance from the wall. Bring the head down, press the head down, elbows in. Tuck the toes under, walk the feet in. Okay, so we're going for the same exercise. Knee in, heel, hips overhead, and you want to feel that you're coming to the tippy toe of the left foot. No weight there. And then switch legs. Left foot in, come to the tippy toes of the right foot. Pull the belly in, send the sit bones up. Switch leg. Right foot in, heel in, come to the tippy toes. Maybe even lift the left foot off the ground using your core strength. Come back, switch legs. Foot in, knee in, press into the head, press into the elbows. Maybe you lift the right foot off the ground. Come in, so there's no kicking, it's more of a weight action. If you want to, bring all the weight towards the wall and press your pelvis against the wall to lift the foot and the left foot just one centimeter off. And then try last time, last side. Pull the belly in, push, and slowly come down. Good. If you felt comfortable with really rounding in, sending the pelvis up and towards the wall or towards the back compared to where you're looking at when you're upside down, then you're ready to bring both knees in and stay there as long as you need to to build that strength. It's a lot of strength needed to come to that tuck position with the knees tucked in. Straightening the legs needs less strength it needs more balance. But in order to build that proprioception, that awareness of your body in space, and that ability to stay upside down with the straight legs, you just need practice and time. So be patient and keep doing the drills, and every day it will be more accessible. Remember, if one day you just need to be with your head on the ground, that's where you are on that day, that's perfect. Keep engaging though, keep rounding the back. Okay, last time. This time we might actually go up all the way. Remember, you can have the wall behind you as a safety net. But you don't want to kick because that's where you lose the battle. That's where you lose the control. It's more about shifting the weight. So think of the hips moving behind the head so that the legs can lift up. So straighten the legs, walk the feet in, and then bring one knee in, heel in, and maybe you also bring the other foot in, knees in. So you can stay here in this tucked position, pressing the head down, pressing the elbows down, and breathe. You can also have a wall behind you, and if you feel safe, start straightening the legs. If I allow my hips to move away, so towards the back of the mat, then I will not be able to straighten the legs up. I need my hips to move towards the front of the mat, so that I start straightening the legs, finding that counterbalance. Once you're there, maybe your feet are on the wall, maybe your feet are all the way up. Keep breathing, pressing the head down, pressing the elbows down, widening the shoulder blades, pulling the elbows together, activating the back of the neck, activating the chest, reaching up through the feet, legs together, activating the glutes, the thighs, the hamstrings, everything is strong. You can point the feet to make sure everything is active, 
and take two more breaths. If you fell down, try it again or go for a previous drill. For one more breath. And when you're ready, in order to come down, you'll bring the knees to the chest first. Remember what's happening with the hips. Hips should stay over the head, even go towards the front of the mat, so that you slowly control the fall as you come down. A lot of core strength to bring the feet to the ground and come back to child's pose. Amazing job. Whatever you did, be proud of yourself. Take two breaths here. And one. Good job. Bring your hands to the ground, bring the knees back, and roll from crown of the head to forehead. Massaging the head and feeling a massage at the neck. Lengthen your neck. Exhale to the crown of the head, inhale to the forehead. Keep the shoulder blades moving towards the ceiling. Relax the face. And then from here, tuck the toes under. Press the hands down and push downward facing dog. Widen the shoulder blades, make it an active straight line down dog. So pushing into the hands, hands to sit bones, one straight line, reaching away. Heels back, sit bones up, reaching away. Inhale deep into the straight lines. And exhale through the mouth, let it go. Stretch even longer. Inhale deeply. Exhale through the mouth, widen the shoulder blades. Press knuckles down, send six pulls back, inhale. Exhale through the mouth, let it go. Good job. Come down, come to lying face up. Bring the knees to the chest one last time. Pull the knees in, send the hips back. Come into a strong crawling ball. And then bring the head back. Bring the knees to one side, open up the left arm as the right, as the knees go to the right, head to the left. Inhale here. Exhale, pull shoulder blades down. Pull the belly in, bring knees back to center, bring the knees to the other side, arm open, opposite side. Then the knees pull the shoulder blades down, gaze towards the straight arm. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, pull the belly in, bring knees back to center, hug the knees, bring the head to the knees, pull the shoulder blades down, engage, and then exhale, release, extend the legs out, Shavasana, good job. If you feel any discomfort in the lower back, feel free to bend the knees, bring the knees together, allow the feet to be quite wide open, pull the shoulder blades down, bring the chin in so that the back of the neck is long. If the legs are straight, allow the feet to splay out, not holding them up with any tension. Allow the palms to face the sky. Take a deep inhale from the toes, scanning the body up to the crown of the head. Open the mouth and let the whole body surrender to gravity. Relax.
coming back to noticing your body. Come back to noticing your breath. Relax the muscles of the face, relax the muscles of the whole body really. Feel comfortable, you can come to kneeling, you can sit on top of something, make this work for you. We'll finish with an om, so bring your hands to heart center and inhale from the roots all the way up to the crown of the head. Oh. you to find previous videos on YouTube, especially if you found this class hard, find previous beginners yoga classes on my YouTube channel, The Secret Yogi, and you'll be able to build up to this. And all these drills, they will help you get closer to a headstand. There's no rush, one day at a time. 